final presenter today is Christina Schosser, and uh, the title of her presentation is The 21st Century Stiller Girls of YouTube in Natalie Butchin's Mass Ornament. And in anticipation of the excellence of Christina's paper. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you everyone for coming and for staying. And um, I'm really excited to share my thesis uh, work in progress with you. And um, I'd like to thank Melanie for standing up the presentation, helping me, and also my thesis committee for their continued help and advice. Natalie Bookchin, a contemporary new media artist previously associated with the net art movement of the early 1990s, has recently changed her approach to creating art with internet material by appropriating YouTube clips. Instead of creating art solely online, as she had previously done, Bookchin has began to take internet material offline in order to document, archive, and critically examine the visual culture being produced by 21st century society. In her recent work, Mass Ornament, Bookchin appropriated YouTube videos of people dancing alone in their rooms and created a seven minute video installation. So this is just um, a mock-up that the artist made of the installation, this is not a video. Mass ornament is projected onto a 14 foot wall and has five speakers spread throughout the gallery. And hopefully you can see here, there's three at the front, oh you kind of can't, three at the front and two in the back, and they all sound off at different times. Bookchin shows the YouTube videos in Mass Ornament based on aesthetic themes of similar gestures, movements, and personal spaces. She then carefully edited the dancers into a choreographed dance based on the found and inherent similarities within the clips, creating an overall video pastiche. Bookchin's Mass Ornament, in the title and aesthetic, references past modernist and industrialization efforts from interwar America and the critical theory of Siegfried Krakauer, who coined the term. According to Krakauer, a mass ornament is, quote, an exodus of individuals into anonymity, through which their nature is deprived of its substance. The mass ornament presents itself as a cult of physical culture, mythological, but devoid of meaning. The overall emphasis when a large group of individuals are together is a patterning geometric aesthetic in which the particular human units are abstracted and blended together. The loss of natural substance that Krakauer refers to is the removal of individual personality and uniqueness in order for a seamless subhuman mass ornament to take precedence. This not only subsumes the individual, but also superficially presents the mass ornament as a large, powerful force of humanity. Krakauer critiques this assumed collective myth as anything but. He also further warned against continually producing and consuming the imagined mass ornament through film, theater, or photography of the time, for instance, because it distracts from any real potential or social political change. During the time of Krakauer's mass ornament theory in interwar America, a new conception of the human system evolved. The new system emphasized an interdependence of assumed parts which were closely integrated as a whole because of modernized advancements in the 20th century. Distinctions between technology and human endeavors were blurred, allowing for technological solutions to potentially solve social concerns. So maybe in this photograph um, or film still of Leslie Berkeley's 42nd Street, his movie, maybe you can see that the individual dancers are sort of blended into this larger even cog of a machine. The industrialized innovations that prioritized efficiency and mass production, namely Taylorism, which then inspired Fordism, was conceptually applied to how humans should act, connect, and relate to one another for the betterment of society. The human body was ideologically reconsidered as a machine, which thus inspired the popularity and increased use of a machine aesthetic. For instance, another example, Margaret Burke White's photograph of the Moscow Ballet School in 1931 titled Machine Dance. In it, the performers imitated a train 
swaying and stamping your feet in an attempt to retrain your bodies and overall performance to be more machine-like and efficient. Thus, the machine way of life, which emphasized power, repetition, speed, efficiency, precision, streamlined appeal, and overall rhythmic flow, dominated America's interwar machine age. Krakauer's main example of mass ornamentation and mechanized humanism were the Tiller Girls. I may have to come in. <laughs> Named after their creator, John Tiller, the Tiller Girls were a chorus line popular in Germany who made their debut in America in the early 1900s. Each Tiller Girl was selected for the chorus line based on similar height, weight, and stature, and then choreographed by Tiller into a spectacular dance, like the popular can can that you see here. They performed standardized moves as part of a larger group choreographed into exact precision. The girls were secondary to the primary whole, aesthetically symbolizing the industrial and modern machine technologies of the 20th century. Their legs and arms became parts of the collective machine, moving in synchronicity to draw the focus onto the abstracted spectacle of the dancers in these. I wish I could let it keep going. But... Hutchin references Krakauer's theory, literally, in the title and ideology, and aesthetically, in the Twitter Girls' machine aesthetic, to provide visual evidence of the changing environment of online human interaction. Hutchin, through mass ornament, reveals the subtle evidence of the 21st century version of the Twitter Girls within YouTube, by indicating many similarities within, with past technological ideologies, aesthetics, advancements, and critiques, Hitchin's work highlights not only the mass dissemination thereof, but individual internalization of mechanized production in the 21st century real interest. Hitchin's mass moment is a warning against the continued development of our society towards a reinvented post-courtist assembly line and highlights the need to examine the new media and countless methods inherent within the internet. This presentation of my larger thesis project will focus on the comparison and similarities between Krakauer's mass on the theory and the two girls with the change video installation. The larger technological, new media, gender, and historical context will be introduced briefly and I can walk in questions about that afterwards. Kitchen's video installation, while not as harsh a critique as Krakauer's, does warn against his mass armor theory of century past, becoming a pervading truth for the present. Kitchen does this through a variety of editing techniques to reveal the already present Tiller Girl aesthetic and mechanized, industrialized emulation of the two. By creating a unifying soundtrack, choreographed dance, with similar dancer characteristics, moves, gestures, and environments, as well as keeping video clips of the same size that are playing all those movements, Mass Ornament reveals the 21st century vision of Krakauer's Twitter girls and subsequent Mass Ornament on YouTube. I will focus on the larger unifying themes which best support this comparison and draws out this similarities. Mass Ornament begins by showing the staging of the recording device by the dancer in a private interior environment, about to go witness to the dancer's moves. One can hear the shuffling of the dancer, adjusting their clothing. Well, maybe you can't. Um, one can hear the shuffling of the dancer, adjusting her clothing and setting in preparation for their de debut. Living rooms, bedrooms, bathrooms, hallways, and kitchens of private residences seem to anticipate the eminent performance. After the prepping of the environment and recording equipment, the title of Bookchin's work airs and segues into the seven minute dance number. Similar environments down to the objects present, Bookchin edited the videos to aesthetically highlight the similarities between the individual spaces. 
For example, um, two of the interiors uh, that I've provided you here show uh, mirrors or Christmas trees as unifying elements in the environment. Bookchin was greatly inspired by Busby Berkeley's Gold Diggers in 1933 and uses the overall development, plot, and some music of the movie throughout Mass Ornament. The soundtrack of the opening scene of Gold Diggers, sung by Ginger Rogers called We're in the Money, is used by Bookchin to open Mass Ornament. One of the most crucial and unifying elements of Bookchin's Mass Ornament, other than her editing the clips into a synchronized dance, is the soundtrack. The soundtrack effectively helps to coordinate the dancers to make it seem that they're all dancing to the same music. At times throughout the video, Bookchin allows for the individual sounds of the original environment or songs dance to to take precedence. Bookchin does this in order to remind the viewer that, convincing us how editing may appear, these dances were originally posted singularly to be viewed by the public at large and danced to different songs of their choice. As the video progresses, Bookchin switches back and forth from a few video clips lined up at some points to larger choreographed sequences of multiple videos stretched across the screen. For example, three across or 20 across. This continually reminds the viewer of the relationship of the individual YouTube dancer within the larger mass ornament that Bookchin has edited together. As seen here, the scale of the video clips are the same throughout the video, whether zooming in or panning out, to emphasize the Tiller Girl mass ornament of qualities of the dancers. Interestingly, just as the individual YouTubers are edited to dance the singular choreography, so too as the video clips expand and contract in and out, appear to dance themselves. About five minutes into the video, Bookchin has the video clips dance a brief solo interlude across the screen, breaking from the otherwise strictly horizontal format. The videos sud suddenly come alive and are able to dance just as those who posted them within them do. Following the video clip stance solo, Bookchin edited gymnastic moves together, providing a brief variation in the overall traditional dance format. Set to part of the soundtrack of Lenny Riefenstahl's Triumph of the Will, the YouTube dancers suddenly seem to be performing a drill for a larger gymnastic or sporting event, emulating Riefenstahl's other popular film, Olympia, from 1938, which documented the first Summer Olympics, a film still of which you see on the right. In this video, um, still, of Olympia, the German athletes become abstracted into an overall pattern of athletes highlighting yet another exemplary mass ornament. It is unclear whether Bookchin's work is specifically referencing Olympia, but it seems this may be the case because of the focus on gymnastic exercises and her use of another Reifenstahl soundtrack. The video ends by increasingly expanding out and widening the scope to the largest amount of video clips side by side throughout Mass Ornament, subsequently reducing the clips to their smallest scale. The dancers are no longer easily distinguishable. The video clips themselves, instead of, instead of the barely distinguishable dancers, create the mass ornament. Just as the Tiller Girls were a system with machine-like precision and efficiency, creating an overall geometric abstract pattern, so too does the ending scene emphasize the mass of YouTube clips instead of any one particular dancer or video. Also, while not intentionally chosen based on specific physical traits like Tiller, Bookchin's dancers do still share similar physical characteristics. Most of the dancers in Mass Ornament are young in age, and the overall majority are female. It can be further inferred that the dancers come from middle to upper class status, as seen in the objects and technology and conditions of the private environments in the backgrounds of the videos. So presumably, they all had to have a computer and a video recording device. Many of the female dancers in Bookchin's Mass Ornament are also dressed in revealing clothing and perform sexualized moves and gestures just as the Tiller girls did. Mass Ornament revealed, alongside similar dancer characteristics, a larger genre within YouTube that is consistently performed, produced, consumed, and repeated. The performance genre of individual people dancing alone in their room is an extremely popular form of YouTube video posts. These particular video posts are usually responding to pop culture, mass media, or other popular media. 
As we see here in the screenshot that I took, of a, I did a search on YouTube, uh, Dancing in My Room, and this is what came up. But interestingly, there seems to be a naturally occurring mass ornament even within the related video column on the right, created by YouTube itself. Bookchin differs, however, because she removed the YouTube videos and edited them together, effectively archiving, documenting, and making obvious the subtly occurring mass ornament. The constant performing, producing, and consuming of culture shown by this particular YouTube genre is exactly what Krakauer warned against a century ago. Krakauer criticized the mass ornament for its ultimately narcissistic style of consuming and producing, repeating its own image, therefore stunting societal progress. This is strikingly similar to the mass ornament in the crowd consuming the Tiller girls as they performed. By watching what one likes and other likewise videos suggested by YouTube, the viewer is consuming both themselves as well as the mass ornament of videos on YouTube. So I don't know if many of you use YouTube, but um, you watch a video, oh look, there's related videos, I'm just going to click on some of these, and then you end up creating your own path, you know, watching what you want to watch, basically. Krakauer critiqued the Tiller Girls because of their mechanized aesthetic, standardization of human parts, and reduction of the girls as cogs in the larger system, which were influenced by industrialized methods such as Fordism. Krakauer explained that the mass ornament was a new type of collective organization that was not based on the natural bonds of community, but instead as a social mass of functionally linked individuals in which true meaning is sacrificed for the sake of abstracting individualism. Consequently, Krakauer continues, quote, as such, they regress into myth and in the process expose the gulf between capitalist ratio and reason. He warned that if society constantly consumed its own image, it was easier for capitalist efforts to control and mobilize the masses through technology. The abstraction of individuals for the larger collective is at its core mythological because it appears fully functional. Therefore, capitalist influences are quickly spread throughout the collective mass, which then passively passively absorbs the information. To combat this and regain the potential for positive societal progress, Krakauer argued the need for more self-reflexivity. This reflexive practice is crucial for the mass ornament to ever eventually overcome its own paralysis and rescue itself from complacency. Bookchin also began to observe that the mechanized aesthetic inspired by industrialization and the Tiller girls in this case was developing in the 21st century. Bookchin noted in retrospect, when mass ornament was first exhibited, that if Fordism once described a social and economic system that focused on large-scale factory production, post-Fordism describes a shift away from the masses of workers in the same space to smaller-scale production by workers scattered throughout the world. These workers are linked by technology rather than an assembly line and therefore are more temporary or contract workers, often working from home, producing more specialized, less standardized goods. If the machinery of the Fordist era was mechanical, post-Fordism is digital. The vehicles for production today are information and co communication technologies rather than conveyor belts and assembly lines. Bookchin observed that the dancers of the YouTube clips that she edited together essentially represent the new post-Fordist assembly line of the 21st century. Furthermore, YouTube is watched individually at one's own computer, comprising a separate, isolated mass ornament audience watching the subtle, internalized, performed mass, audience, uh, mass ornament of the videos. The YouTuber who posts the videos is indeed creating a product for public consumption, linked by the internet, working from home, producing a specialized, standardized genre video. Bookchin's mass ornament, by directly referencing ide ideologically and aesthetically Krakauer's theory and the Tiller Girls, ultimately warns against potentially remaining a stunted mass of individuals consuming YouTube videos along the post-Fortis internet assembly line. In doing so, mass ornament is a warning to the potential loss of individual rights and humanity, as well as the increased passive interaction with the previously democratic, progressive, and potentially positive technology that could and still can be used to improve the future. Thank you.
are often the most popular are not the ones of people who actually have sort of real talent, but the ones who are sort of embarrassingly, you know, horrible. Um, and and those so are, hell. Are, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, but that but the that the sharing in, in the sort of um, the sharing in the in, in this sort of you know this the, the kind of amateurness of, of these other people is part of the pleasure that you get out of it. That, you know, None of us are sort of professional singers and dancers, and you know, well, maybe like, you know, I'm saying, um, but the, you know, that's part of the kind of the fun of YouTube is just, you know, we're not any better than it's sort of, it's, it's certain pleasure sort of watching other people, uh, you know, make fun of themselves in that way. Um, but in contrast to something like the, you know, the Bugs and Birkin musicals, where, you know, these dancers were sort of works the bone, you know, Theater reading, um, you know, these sort of perfect um, choreographed scenes. Um, you know, it just seems like, in terms of what, what she's doing, you know, they only become sort of mass ornament in the way that she's, in the way that she's sort of um, manipulating them mm -hmm. and sort of taking them out of the level of sort of amateurs, kind of, you know, enjoying them and, and, you know, trying to, trying to kind of pass them off as something that's more. Sure, there's a lot of good things to talk about there. Um, so maybe I don't think I got to it in my presentation, but one of the um, crucial differences, I pointed out a lot of similarities in my talk today, but one of the crucial differences in all of this is that mass mediation when it's originally created. So say Tiller Girls or Busby Berkeley, um, they have Berkeley, they have John Tiller as the um, sort of controlling force creating the mass ornament. So in this case, you could even say that Bookchin is is the Tiller, is or is Berkeley. But um, the interesting thing about YouTube is that, um, well, one side note, uh, actually a lot of the accounts are held by corporate or um, like media stations, news stations, and they get the longer clips, longer than 10 minutes, and um, there is this amateur um, video posting going on, um, but, uh, well, and that's why I brought this up, because this is uh, Beyonce's single ladies, um, the music video, and so Bookchin chose these dancers, you know, to choreograph, because they were performing this uh, cultural uh pop cultural video, and so um, what's happened is there's been an internalization of sort of um, uh, internalization of uh, the mass ornaments. So instead of a mass media top-down um, Tiller or uh, Berkeley, you know, controlling how the dancers are dancing and synchronizing them that way, uh, for in, in this case, uh, the mass ornament is internalized because everybody posted these singularly, yes, and are dancing to Beyonce single ladies, but um, this is just uh, like a disseminated mass ornament. I don't know if I answered your question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, well, yeah. Um, well, I just had a follow-up question to that. Um, sure. So, getting into that is, you know, you can talk a, lot, a little bit about, or not, I mean, you mentioned at the beginning the way this is exhibited, right? And it's mm -hmm. a museum, it's an installation piece. Mm -hmm. I just wonder how that is supposed to affect, I guess my real question is about the sort of the viewer's experience and what it is that we're meant to sort of take pleasure in that's, that makes this different than just us sitting at home on the computer looking at YouTube videos. And it just seems like, 
again, with this comparison that we're making to the sort of our first thing, it seemed like one of the things that was new or different about that was to sort of give people something that they sort of were already seeing with the theater, but to sort of to give them a, a kind of new experience, different experience of the same thing by using these sort of train shots to sort of go about, you know, the dancers to show these sort of kaleidoscope kind of effects or to action shots. So there's one in, in 42nd Street where the camera kind of goes through all the women's legs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so sort of rather than having just a stationary position, you know, say like at a computer being like at a, um, you know, in, a, in an audience or something in a theater, the camera um, was able to give you this sort of different sort of experience of the space um, or of the dance. And I was just wondering how you sort of, with that kind of shift between the viewer's experience, how you, s what your kind of um, view is about what she's doing as an artist, mm -hmm. and our viewing experience of these videos individually at home with our computers, and push, putting it into some medium space where people are sort of invited to collectively experience it together um, in a way that's sort of different from the way that we might experience it individually. Sure, so that's actually something that's um, really important that I acknowledge in the paper is that um, this is meant to be viewed as a video installation in a space. It's not meant to be viewed online, although you can get it from YouTube or Vimeo. So um, what happens then uh, in the video installation viewer interaction experience is that um, sound is coming out from different speakers at different times. The clips themselves are um, like two-thirds human scale, and you're in a, a completely blackened gallery. And so um, there's also, I showed you the um, part where it's, the clips are dancing across the screen, or they're panning in and out. And so I feel like that probably emulates more closely how, say, the uh, mass ornaments of interwar America machine age were experienced say in film, you'd be in a theater, it's dark, sound's coming out from different, you know, points, um, and you're kind of uh, watching the video. And then online, um, just with the video posts themselves and um, the direction of consuming it on your own, on your own computer by yourself, I think that's also sort of what Bookchin's saying is that there's this separated, isolated, alienated mass ornament, you know, of the audience that's consuming these videos. Um, so, I mean, there's, there's a difference there between then and now, but that there's still, that this theory and this critique of Krakauer and it still holds up. It's just changed a little bit. Okay, that's a good question. So, um, and this kind of links up with what um, the whole Facebook controversy right now, where everything's, you know, your, your information, your picture, and everything is made automatically public, and it's owned by Facebook, essentially, so they have the rights. Uh, so what happened here is that, um, same thing, you post a video on YouTube, it's a public um, platform, and what Bookchin did was she just ripped the videos. I mean, it was available to her, and um, she was inspired by the medium. Um, so, no, there was no permission taken from each and every one of the dancers. That's a good question. And then the text underneath, which you can't read um, here, it's the original view count from when the video was posted by the user at the point when she downloaded it. So, um, and she preserved that. I mean... Presumably, she could have edited that out, 
but she preserved that in order to um, highlight the fact that these videos were made by individual people meant to be viewed um, for the public or else don't post it on YouTube, you know. So, good question though. Kinsey? Mm -hmm. Yes. No, that's a good question, and actually that's something I personally wavered with, because I um, didn't want to even think that, you know, this post is assembly line and we're all mass-mediated and recognized and all that. Um, I think that that's an important um, discourse just within new media debates itself, this, um, you know, utopian dreams, positive potential of internet and the you know alienated isolated experience that you can have in your own room watching these videos by yourself as well so um i guess i chose to read the latter um the more um pessimistic view <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> I mean, that's a good point. Um, and I think that, so what Bookchin's trying to do then is yes, there's all these um, intensely personal and intimate and sometimes sexualized videos or just funny or silly or amateur videos being posted. But what she's trying to point out with all, all these millions and millions of videos is that there's so much similarity and there's, in, in this cultural, especially in this case for people, millions of people are performing this um, music video. It's ingrained, it's internalized that um, really this um, seemingly individual post of how well they dance is actually not that unique. I mean, maybe you have your different take on it or something, but um, that what she's trying to do is just point to how much similarity there is in this um, culturally performed and internalized um, dance in, in this instance. I hope that answers your question. Brittany? Absolutely. And um, something that I didn't, I don't know if you guys saw the Pepsi commercial where um, it was a bunch of YouTube videos where people were in there recording themselves, but it was a mass choreographed. Um, they would hand something over to somebody else in a different video and, you know, it was like super coordinated like that. And so um, I guess I would say it's such a small part of, you know, your viewing experience, but that was certainly you know, make it seem like, you just don't know if you're watching it as at the exact same time as maybe the million other viewers, but I, I see what you're saying. Good question. Professor Rita? Have you considered that this is not limited to 
mechanized forms of production that people do these things in real time in real space, such as waves of football. Oh, yeah. Um, actually, uh, Professor Drew on my thesis committee, he brought up the Chinese Olympics as an example of this real time um, performance that's, that still goes on. So um, I guess what's different here is that um, these dancers in these videos aren't, aren't in the same room doing it together. Um, I'm not sure if that <laughs> answers your question. Yeah, I think there's that um, it isn't a wider cultural phenomenon. It's not mm -hmm. a secret to the technology. Yes. Yes. So, do you want to be back with the questions? Can I just Okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 Very much transfer. If anybody can tell me where it was in the video, I'll give you a prize. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I wanted to be part of the mass song. Okay. <laughs> oh, I can make one. <laughs> Thank you. And it actually, as well, I'm just going to say, you know, really fanatizing to the Soda Girls. What, you know, superb presentations, beautiful research. Absolutely incredible.